uh, I would like to start another panel, which is more focused on new media, but actually also on theory. And I would like to give uh, space and floor to Anna Olszewska and would like to welcome her here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me just switch, switch the window. Yeah. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, I would like to talk in terms of like uh, who does what right now in reporting. First of all, Barbara, thank you for uh, bringing up this uh, fantastic, I believe, uh, the topic of uh, catastrophe and of uh, ecological catastrophe of, of uh, an environment in the way that you put it with the case with Zdenek uh, Beran. Uh, I find it like super interesting also for what we do at the recent lab to introduce us briefly. Barbara took us on board, as I mean the recent lab crew at the Faculty of Humanities at AGH Science and Technology University in Krakow because of our long-term discussions we have together <laughs> and that started at some point with the project of um, restoration of one of the so-called pioneering well pioneering media artworks uh edward ignatovich recensta uh, and so now um, we have uh, so we started years ago here and also recent the lab started with uh, with the project of um, um, of the large scale um, um, media art sculpture uh, restoration and i what i would like to brief a bit today it is a um, research involvement that branched out of this uh, project one of the lines that we that we develop right now which is about as some in some way which is about like the uh, upcycling of artworks artworks upcycling as a um, as a strategy or maybe rather a tactic uh, that emerges somewhere on the peripheries of the artworks so we we delve into these peripheral practices that are not institutionalized right now. And we believe that they are somehow distinct uh, from uh, the curatorial practices and art restoration of these practices. This is more about think, looking at this area, which to use the, the certo term, a kind of poaching in, in the artwork, on the margins of the artwork, where you, where you look into these gray zones uh, where uh, you can find mm, uh, some uh, space uh, to uh, to develop uh, let's mm, not institutionalized uh, practices so uh, uh, to uh, to make a proposition of this and to brief on on our research and and practice in this area what do i mean uh, what do we mean by um, this um, uh, upcycling as practice and uh, and the tactics uh, that may might be compared into just been diving somewhere in the peripheries of a large exhibition. Uh, we understand upcycling as a creative uh, reuse, quite in a ge generic way, as a creative reuse, uh, a process of transforming um, the byproducts and waste materials. But in this specific case, we think of the um, uh, artworks themselves as byproducts and waste materials of the art world institutions and um, exhibition circulation, the production, uh, the production process, uh, logistics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we are taking this part of the uh, f, um, of the uh, f, uh, of the f, um, whole environment of the um, uh, of uh, galleries and museums and look and give a closer look to this. Uh, what uh, what might be the this this proposition about it is I believe that the value of um, this research into uh, 
upcycling and, and marginal practices of uh, uh, creative reuse lies in um, reframing the way that we think about uh, um, the restored historical artworks. Uh, and this uh, can add what I believe to the some, maybe it can add a bit to the theory of uh, media art restoration as well. Because the thing is about the, this, this way of thinking, the proposed way of thinking is about like shifting the uh, um, uh, shifting the points from, uh, let me illustrate it with Ignatovich slides. Like you, on on average, when you when you speak about the restoration uh, process, like like we have many times with the, our original case, you uh, you show the, you show the art piece, yeah, and then you show the original uh, setup. Uh, then you show how it looks and where it is now, right, right now, yeah. And there is sometimes, sometimes if you go into details, there is something that that you show in between, which is a very like usually boring and disappointing picture. Uh, that uh, actually I believe can be a starting point for for everything, because as we all know, the all uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the most of the media artworks as uh, at, at, at actually it is. A kind of like the uh, more general framework uh, when we think about uh, the life cycle of artworks. There is a moment uh, when this, uh, when when the art piece is uh, like um, uh, um, submitted to a kind of stressful situation when it is uh, like um, f f in a moment when it finds when the object is put into a kind of limbo yeah after the first original display after the i don't know first owner dies and it is put on the market for for the resale etc etc and we know it and we kind of like if you if if someone is into art restoration uh, we uh, and uh, and also um, curating it is a fascinating moment because because this is a moment of and of um, uh, of a crisis, out of which we can find uh, very interesting pathways toward what is what is going to happen happen next, and we also are aware that. Uh, after uh, this kind of dumpingness, let's let's say um, uh, the mm, the external um, the the artwork is uh, is placed in. Uh, kind of external, not, not artificial ecosystem. And uh, from that point, uh, if the artwork goes back to the museum or a gallery or a collection, it could be either wounded, uh, like displayed as a wounded one, or uh, maybe uh, uh, fake, if it doesn't work in the, in the way that we would appreciate it, or uh, refabricated, we would say upcycled. Uh, refabricated, which is which is another like path of um, of um, thinking about the outcome of the process, and we find the latest um, uh, the latest um, let's say uh, strategy the most interesting uh, case, and this is I think the common point for all of all of us uh, here as I as as I hear the previous presentations like like how to deal with this and we kind of know that there is no way back you cannot you cannot remediate after limbo to the original state but we enjoy and and this is also about this our research is about this enjoyment where does this enjoyment come from yeah <laughs> we enjoy this moment of of um, of intervention and uh, like uh, re uh, maybe not the reconstruction, but uh, as I would say, upcycling of the of the artwork. So this is the why. This is the process that I believe um, is a process that um, uh, catalyzed uh, otherwise indetectable um, components of social material order, uh, like. Uh, in broadly speaking, for me, as a, someone coming from the humanities background, uh, more than from uh, art restoration or uh, I don't know, creative uh, profession background, this is the moment when we can observe actually how components of our uh, social economic structures 
uh, are working together. And uh, there are many places to go to observe it, but, uh, but I think you can go to the stock exchange, you can go to the warfare and, and so on and so on. But if you look at the artwork, I believe this is the, this, um, this is the moment of uh, uh, upcycling or um, refabrication. The, the out of the limbo uh, route is the, is the point zero to, to see actually what is important around, uh, around this, um, uh, this area of the art world, which is, in, which is like um, uh, important, um, uh, for the, um, uh, important for us. Um, in terms of uh, economy, because what we do, this is another topic at the Recenster Lab, we go into this post-productive turn, we are settled at the Science and Tech Academy, uh, and uh, which is very much about the extractivism, a neoliberal system, uh, system economy, uh, in terms of the strategies of like applied sciences. And then we have also this debate on like, the uh, post uh, productivism and um uh, and uh, let's say ecological approach to uh, um to the natural resources and so on so that, that's how how we see it and what we what what happened for for now there's a, there are like some humble uh, um like uh, steps uh, or uh, some um, some um, uh, some uh, stories that are that we try to like catalyze and accumulate around this recent lab research. I will tell you, I, maybe I will brief on one of uh, one of these, uh, which is um, the uh, for, as we started to think about this uh, lost art uh, restoration with the recent, and then we went to thinking about upcycling of the uh, of the works of art. Uh, and uh, this um, and this um, uh, original um, uh, and this original project in the upcycled, let's say, um, uh, strategy uh, is connected with the uh, work of Irena Kaliska and Janek Płatek. This is an installation. Uh, um, uh, that has been produced in 2022 uh, for the uh, Photo Month Krakow uh, exhibition. And it is uh, the, the whole uh, piece is composed of like two uh, elements. One is a photography. We see it by Irena Kaliska. We see it on the exposition in the original context here. And uh, how it looks. Uh, this is the uh, this is the close up, and um, and the wall, the painted wall, the the mural painted by Janek Janek Płatek, which is basically the uh, outline of this um, uh, photography, the the a sketch, uh, we, uh, onto which uh, the artist has applied a holographic uh, layer that has been, mm, I say. Uh, prompt during a oculographic session as a few um, friends of the artists have been invited to the studio uh, to look at the Irena's photo because after all the abort is all about like the things that can be seen the things that are pixelized we don't uh, oppressive uh, images and and the, op and the images that um, uh, that actually work around us so it is very much into like the ways of seeing stuff etc but this is a different topic so mm, the the story mm, uh, um, the story is connected with the original installation of the piece and and, and I find it very generic, like very typical um, a story. When you you prepare an exhibition, uh, you invite artists and uh, to uh, install a piece, and uh, usually uh, this work is very much in terms of like uh, materialization. The way it is produced is this, like permanently collect, uh, connected with the exhibition space. Like we are all aware that after the exhibition is over, uh, someone comes uh, along and paints all these walls for, with like, I don't know, no purple and puts some new, new pictures on it and so on and so on. So this was, uh, also, and uh, this is also the moment when uh, uh, we know that some uh, 
um, for, um, some uh, members of technical crews uh, and people who are actually working around like dealing with all this material stuff like re preparing the space for 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 the for the new show they enter and the, and this is the point where i get to this marginal practice sometimes they take care of this pieces like the first time I saw it I saw it after the closing of Vro Biennale when we were there all, uh, already and we kind of we are all aware that this is the, this is the moment like okay the contract is over there is no like specific protocol to destroy the wall or whatever everybody knows it's gonna it cannot be there for forever they need this the the museum or the gallery needs the space this is not written anywhere, and uh, and literally, it came the one of the parts of the story, like going into this peripheral gray zone practice. That's why I call it this way, or the tactics, is that I saw um, the technicians uh, working with Rob Biennale, who were actually <laughs> kind of like. Um, decomposing the walls of one of the installations 2000, uh, 2019 and they were taking it into there like i asked the guy hey what are you doing with uh, with this pixel art wall very very nicely painted by like duo coming from japan with uh, novoselsky re pixelized reproduction this like uh, because I, I, I was actually the one, hey, the car is coming next day for the census, so I would like to have, if you are throwing this, like trashing this this wall, I can have it, I can put it somewhere. I said, no, I promise it to my daughter. He said something literal like that, like I've promised it to my daughter. And then, uh, and so, so, you know, this, I believe it is a generic situation. Then then the curators came and they said, what are you doing uh, with with this? Uh, what are you talking about? And so became, I would like to have this piece of wall because you are not doing anything with, with this pixel art installation. So we can share, actually. I already I started to trade with the guy. Okay, you take this piece for your daughter. I will take this to, to recent the lab studio. We will have it on the wall. We have some space. And uh, so Dominic, came and said, well, no, 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 we are keeping this for uh, for raw warehouses. And like three years later, I asked her, what is, uh, how is this pixel art going? Like, do you have this? Do you keep it? I, said, I have no idea. We have it somewhere like <laughs> So this is about like them being the, the typical story, something that really happened uh, along our route, one of these little stories that, 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 that you gather, and then, then, then start to think about it in, in a broader sense. So the next try, we were like being, we've been connected somehow with this exhibition. So we tried to use the window of, of opportunity and we actually, well, kind of legalized it because uh, <laughs> we asked the artists if they're okay if we take it. <laughs> And then we asked the museum if they are okay if uh, uh, if the walls, the one part of the of the wall will, will go uh, to the uh, to the university uh, university uh, space to the campus space. Uh, so we've been granted with the permission. So it's not that that gray gray, uh, but uh, but afterwards. Uh, it uh, the billboard landed up in uh, in our uh, lab um, lab space, which is a huge dusty industry like uh, space, and it has been uh, reworked. Also, here with the uh, um, permission of of Yannick, uh, of the artist, but but again, we we kind of were we all of us, including the the authors of the work and uh, of, uh, and the uh, university and the recent lab, we were kind of aware that we are not doing the proper restoration of the work. Work we are not also saving it in a way like we have not decided to keep it integral, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But but we are trying to like upcycle it um, into um, into our department um, department of uh, um, uh, space in order to uh, check out or bring a what a new case for uh, this building up of the collection that is made of lost and found um, media, media artworks. Uh, 
so mm, if we mm, if you were to uh, like mm, start uh, uh, based on this uh, based on this idea uh, of uh, like trying to touch a bit the this these zones of like asking the permission of uh, decomposing walls uh putting it like cutting it a bit then putting it uh onto on into a new space this was the moment when we started observe actual actually what happens this is the 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 press the 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 most informative one for us uh what happens around what kinds of problems and issues are uh, are around this uh, moment of re like upcycling uh, moving uh, um, uh, reinstalling uh, reinstalling the world uh, the work which are to our like uh, surprise uh, not connect not not that much connected with the work itself as with the environment uh, in which it uh, dwells for example, here, um, the reinstallation of the billboard we expected is going to be like a quite a discussion uh, at the university and around it about the about the content of the work and the topic, which is uh, the f quite uh, radical, etc. But the thing was that the that the whole um, cluster of uh, issues and problems has been concerned uh, has been like centered around the uh, copyright and outdoor uh, like kind of legal and authorship agreements that are connected with the use of the public space of newly opened uh, building at the campus area. So you can imagine we expected like things like copyright issues, like selling issues and uh, and uh, discussion on content. Nothing, none of this happened. What we were like uh, struggling with uh, during during this process was a question whether we can install it in the main lobby uh, on the like ground level because it is a newly open uh, building of our department. Or can we move some uh, um, some uh, information uh, structures that are in the building, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Is this legal to do this? Not for the security reason, also, but 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 for mostly. And it this was surprising. Uh, the way uh, for the for the agreement that actually keeps some details about the design of this interior, which is fairly generic anyway. So. <clears throat> To uh, get to the um, uh, to get to the point, where I have proposition, and as as we talk, uh, as we spoke with Barbara, uh, like just just du during during the break, the break, I have I have a proposition for for us, which is uh, um, which is actually uh, well, we can we can keep it as an as an empty proposition, but but you can, uh, but we can also go on and uh, to discuss it. Let, let me let me change the let me change the screen here. I need to change the screen to sh to show it to you, uh, like referring to the to the title uh, to the title of the talk, which mentions the newly uh, opened uh, moment of uh, Venice by and now. Uh, let's uh, have a look at the map uh, of the um, of the uh, Venice of Venice and and Giardini. Uh, I don't know if you see it. Something is like. Uh, can you see uh, it? We can see it, yes. Yeah. yeah, so good. I cannot, but that's okay. Uh, I hope uh, I hope I'll be uh, the, the, the screen will back in both. So we let's let's look at the satellite map. Uh, if if we go when right now with this uh, with this investigation, let's say, when we uh, when we uh, think about uh, mm, like uh, biennial uh, uh, ex exhibition or uh, uh, media art uh, media art festival or anything like that, uh, you can you can you can reverse the way of thinking. You can re you can shift the, the the crucial points of of your involvement and observation into the uh, moment when you look at the map. And you think of where actually the Venice Biennale dustbins are. 
have you have a, I don't know thought about it or uh, uh, or discuss it uh, anyway uh, for, um, the the fictional scenario we could propose for for this kind of uh, research would be that one where you go uh, to uh, a large contemporary art exhibition or uh, or a festival in order to poach on the mark or on the peripheries of this uh, of this um, of, of this project in order to uh, dive into dustbins um, and uh, look for the uh, for byproducts materials that have been like actually uh, disposed of this exhibition in order to collect them and uh, open a new project which would be about upcycling upcycling uh, that we can uh, on uh, about which we can think also in terms of like uh, f f producing a kind of compressed object a version of uh, a, me a meta object for the exhibition a version of a uh, um, of an artwork that recollects like the metadata or a, a mathematical model mat uh, for, um, that has been produced during machine learning process all the materials and the features of the uh, f um, of the of artworks that have been put together uh, for a temporary uh, display. So that would be uh, the invitation uh, which I which I leave uh, as a uh, as a, as, a, as, a, as an idea for the next year uh, workshops maybe in Venice. Thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you. It was perfect actually, and the meeting in Venice. Yeah, it sounds really good. Uh, when I'm thinking about net and just to somehow uh, we are uh, moving to another paper, but I was kind of intrigued actually. Uh, there is a, a, a one question actually. I think yeah. you should tell us more about the painting, what uh, the image really was about actually, because the question about public space and uh, uh, having this kind of artwork in a public space and installation and this whole discussion, which wasn't there actually, or with, which was only about practical level and material level and so on is more interesting. So mm -hmm. maybe I would ask you to do that. We can open the discussion later, but actually this kind of netting and thinking about peripheries, referring to the centers and this kind of mirroring is kind of, it's super interesting actually. And I think it might be also applied to thinking about the final artwork actually somehow, because we are again um, on mm -hmm. the peripheries and it's mirroring something else. So we are getting to the center from the peripheries more yeah. easily and it's more interesting. And on the other hand, social and economical and symbolical level, which are connected with that, our choices and so on, it's very much present. Uh, I know I'm talking too much, but I was invited for some conference, which is in, I think in Krakow or in Wroclaw, but it's also online, about sacral uh, in art, uh, in contemporary arts, specifically or transformation in contemporary arts in Central Europe. And there is, at least in Czech context, I would say there is such hunger for this kind of, um, uh, you know, sacral thinking and this kind of elements because we are missing it so very much that we mm -hmm. are somehow focusing on it also on the material and as exhibition or like curatorial levels and so on and bringing it back. And when mm -hmm. I'm thinking about Beran and elevation and this kind of Christological aspect inside it, I would want to somehow stay uh, uh, outside of it. But on the other hand, I think we, I'm getting to some something very similar from different perspective, let's say. So uh, upcycling and thinking about this kind of um, connections, which are somehow outside <laughs> of the main uh, center is yeah. super interesting, really good point. But tell us more about the painting. I think it uh, really is important. So the title of the work is Billboard. I can switch again uh, some to, 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 this, to this image. Let, give, give me a second. The title of the work is Billboard and uh, it is about like uh, uh, looking and seeing things that uh, um, um, belong to the uh, to the campaign that has been a pro-life campaign uh, that has been launched uh, during the COVID pandemic period in um, uh, in Poland. Um, okay, 
uh, I have some issues with with switching uh, with switching for uh, uh, for the with sharing my presentation screen. So I will. Just, if you go to the original photo by Irene Kaliska, she's one of these artists that actually are very much on the border, like they operate on the border of social fears and they they work with social fears and hysteria and political hysteria, uh, the dark eroticism, et cetera, et cetera, body, uh, uh, um, uh, body fetish and all this stuff. This is uh, the piece that uh, Irena actually, the setup that Irena invented uh, during the lockdown. And she, her story behind it, it was like she felt so much oppressed with the only thing that she could see, could have seen from her window on the street at the time, which was a pro-life billboard, uh, which very drastic representation of, um, of the human flesh, to, to put it like in a delicate way. So she decided to put it on the, into the setup on the wall uh, in front of the of a mess of a chaos, yeah, uh, of the things that have been composed from from the uh, from her like studio apartment, and she also asked Yannick to pixelize this billboard. But the thing, the trick is that if <laughs> when you look at this photo from the distance. You see what you can reconstruct your, your mind, reconstruct this image, and you cannot forget it. So it is like big uh, images that are oppressive, that are here. You don't want to look at them. They stay with you, and then you pixelize them, then you see them again, and you know the play. So that's also why the, the reason why we decided to do this oculographic session to, to check what uh, actually what uh, like where your uh, gaze is fixated when you look at this photo and the trick was that no one was looking at the billboard as you go to Yannick uh, uh, Yannick wall at the exhibition the exhibition was about looking yeah looking back and looking and machine gaze etc or this stuff that we are working on here as well and no one was looking at the billboard so we like to, to marry, may make a shortcut with this. When we proposed to um, this uh, piece to to the university, we expected that like okay, we are proposing highly controversial, uh, uh, let's say at least photo, mm, but at the time a uh, very valuable work of art in terms of like technologies and uh, and the politics of gays etc etc and uh, again we we did all the paperwork uh, uh, with some curatorial comments etc etc where everything was written down and we all organized another oculographic session during the opening and no one was looking at the billboard like is it there is a story of behind it, I believe, behind this upcycling. Uh, let's because that's how I think about this. It was even not curatorial; it was upcycling. We were playing like upcyclers there. Behind it, there is a story of myopia. Uh, like next year, we did another project when we put some uh, music into the um, elevators in the public space like unknown hip hop band, uh, mosaic, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody did have a comment on it. Like you can put an image on the wall and you get silence. Then you put some MP3 into the, into the elevator and you get lots of comments, people coming uh, from here and there. Usually the comments in that way, like either they uh, like mm, refer to lines they hear <laughs> or, they have like okay we have a christmas time so let's put some carols inside <laughs> so again but this is a different line of story but but the but the billboard is it is about gays and looking back and uh, and like not looking at the people thank you thank you very much for that.